there's the penalty chart. Mum, you've committed a criminal offence. No, you have, Mum. A lot of us get angry about parking. Look, you need a degree to understand it. It's tormenting people. With over 35 million vehicles on the road, all over the UK, the councils have a fight on their hands. You know, it's always about me, myself and I. It's where I want to park, how I want to park, and bugger the consequences. And last year, they gave out five million tickets. You're not giving them a ticket, are you? Yeah, I've given them five million. Oh, really sorry. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Now we step over the yellow line. You owe the council over 500 pounds. And feel what it's like dishing out the fines. Can the police, please? Can the police, please? I've just been assaulted. Catching people out. Do you understand what a disabled badge is for? Yeah. yeah. I know it's wrong. Never mind, I've got caught and that's it. And seeing the secret working of um, a court... I won't do that. ...that tries to clean up the mess. I deliberately parked there because I believed I was safe to do so. I'm faced with Big Brother. I'm thoroughly disgusted. This is Britain at war, but not as we know it. I have got a real job. That's what the Nazi said. I'm just doing my job. London is the most expensive place to park in the world. And in the borough of Barnet, they're cashing in on this, having abolished all free parking on the high street. My mother-in-law went up and picked a prescription from Boots and um, 55 pounds. So a prescription for my elderly in-laws is going to cost me 55 pounds. Well, I'm sitting in the van so that my son can pop over to Greg's so I don't get nicked. I have to have eyes up my backside. Barnet is more than overzealous. Barnet is punitive. There's a general attitude of uh, let's make money out of people in Barnet by pinching as many as possible. Stopping here costs two pounds an hour, only payable by credit card or mobile phone. For one group of locals, the council's parking policies are destroying their high street, and they've had enough. Can I just beg two minutes of your time? We're campaigning for free parking on our high street. The Barnet Society are a local heritage group, formed to preserve the borough's respectable surroundings. You can't come here to High Barnet and run into a shop for half an hour, an hour, drop the cleaning off, go to the butchers, pick up a bit of meat. You can't do anything local without it being a pain and a nuisance. Leading the fight for the high street is retired political journalist Nicholas Jones. It's an old, very historic town centre and we want to attract people to it and we believe that a free parking period would get shoppers back in here. We've got um, a high street which is literally dying on its feet with charity shop after charity shop and we blame it on the council. Fire them. Fire the lot of them and let's start again. Arnett Council argue free parking isn't the answer to boosting trade because the spaces are already busy. But Nicholas believes they're barking up the wrong tree. This dog parlour shop, Hadley Hounds, it was run by a young girl who had set up her own business. And she was absolutely mortified, you see, because a, a lot of her customers are elderly ladies who were bringing the poodle in or whatever it was for a quick trim. And they only want to stop five minutes, but they said they had to stop five minutes to calm the dog down and then they would come out and get a ticket. And now she's left. And look what this notice says. This is the notice. She says, we are moving and she's going somewhere where there will be free parking in capital letters. She said it was just driving her business into the ground and she's gone. Thank you, Hadley. We miss you. And look, there's the little paw print to tell you what it was. It was a doggy shop. When you think about it, Barnet Council driven her, driven her out of business. And we find it very distressing. In Barnet, they want free parking brought back to boost the high street. 
come and try and understand this sign, because you need a degree to understand it. Nicholas Jones believes he's found further evidence of parking rules gone mad. This is what you're going to do. Look, pay by phone parking. Here are all the numbers. So many of the elderly people come here and they just cannot understand what they have got to do. Pay by phone is paying by torment. It's tormenting people, tormenting people, because they're not prepared to use a mobile phone and a credit card to pay 30 minutes to stop here when they could go to one of the shopping centres. And we've got a council that won't even listen to us. This is location 9108. Well, what's that got to do with living in Barnet? It's just driving people away. For Nicholas, the fight is about much more than parking policy. I've lived in High Barnet for 40 years. My kids went to school here. I've got to make a contribution to trying to keep this a vibrant local place where people want to live, where people want to shop. Fortunately for the Barnet Society, the cause has found someone it sees as an ally with real power. Anna Slater is chief reporter at the Barnet Times. She's backing 30 minutes free parking on the high street. Sometimes we'll have a parking story in the paper at least once a week. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> people who got parking tickets unfairly, people are angry about CPZ outside their house. Bins and hedges is what we thrive on and cats up trees. Hello, news desk. Okay. OK, uh, this isn't Debenhams, you've come through to a, a local newspaper. <laughs> Sorry. Cheers, bye. Somebody wants to pay her Debenhams card. I get stuff like that all the time. Anna's enlisted local traders to help gather the 2,000 petition signatures needed to force Barnet Council to debate the issue. Hi, I'm Anna, I'm from the local paper. Cafe owner Helen Michael has been fighting for change for more than four years. By 8 o'clock in the old days, we'd be packed in here. You couldn't get a space. By 10 a.m. this morning, I've served four people. Nobody by wants 10 to come, and there's nothing. Like people there. would pull up, they'd grab their bacon sandwiches, their, their, their cups of tea, their cup, cappuccinos, and stuff like that. You just don't do it anymore because the traffic wardens are waiting to pounce. Well, what have your customers said? Honestly, it's been devastating. Every single trader, without fail, will tell you the parking was a huge factor in, 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 in just watching footfall disintegrate. For goodness sake, why isn't something being done? It's so simple. It's paid everything. OK. So, everything's paid. It's no longer a debtor. Tow truck can go and do some work. We can go and do some more work. Let's go and find another one. It's a good day. If you don't want to make Mike's day, Join the 21,000 people every year who appeal their ticket at the Traffic Penalty Tribunal. So there's no dispute that the permit wasn't there. You then wrote to the council. In London, Caroline Shepherd is adjudicating. I joined the army in September 1954 and retired as a lieutenant colonel. I'm not a habitual lawbreaker. I try to... Why don't you tell me about what actually happened on the day? After 23 years in the job, Caroline has heard every story in the book. One of the first cases I ever dealt with, a sort of 80-year-old lady was at a pay and display machine. It said on the machine, if this machine isn't working, then you should get a ticket from the machine across the road. So she just walked out towards the machine and was run over, taken to the hospital. And subsequently, her car was clamped. And the local authority wrote back and said, we don't accept that being run over is a reasonable excuse for not moving your car. To rigidly apply parking rules, even if motorists... 84-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Nobbs got a ticket when he didn't notice the once free station car park wasn't free anymore. On the day in question, I parked as usual in this car park, and I failed to notice that inside, it was no longer free. When you go into a, uh, into a railway carriage, you don't read all the safety notices. Once you've done it once, you take it for infrared. And I'd often spend a long time peering at a sign, wondering what it means. And if I've learned nothing else, I've learned 
that you should never give yourself the benefit of the doubt. You know the sign which sets out the, the rules for the car park? Where is that? I think it's on the right, yes. I think it's on the right. But that's, that sign has been changed. I didn't intend to break the law. Yeah, of course. Um, it's purely a mistake. Because Generally, the principle is, as you know, that every time you park, you ought to go and look and check. It's not looking good for Mr. Nobbs, but he has an ace up his sleeve. That was the main road. The free parking sign on the approach road. Yes, right. OK. The original sign, which says free car park on the A30, was still there. Yes. OK. All right. All right. Well, they could at least have put, you know, something up to say, you know, new, new rules apply, which would have alerted you to go and look at the, uh, at the other sign. And I don't think they brought it to your attention sufficiently well, so I'm going to allow your appeal. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We still have justice in Britain, and I'm glad to see that it works. And what will you do now? Go home and tell my wife, we'll have a bottle of champagne, I think. <laughs>
years of campaigning on top of running a business and the family and everything else, it's hard work and you feel like you're hitting your head on the, against the wall and you're not getting anywhere. 